wonderful work. You know, we're talking about uh, reentry uh, for our folks that have been behind the wall. Could you talk a little bit more for me about what are the impacts to the constituencies um, for our Maryland lawmakers beyond just folks that are returning um, from uh, incarceration, but like our homeless uh, population, our returning veterans, um, single parents? Can you elaborate a little bit more on what the state plan is doing uh, and the benchmarks uh, and their goals, what are they doing for that particular population? Absolutely. So when we talk about expanding the demographics, it's everything from the ex-offenders, which we have spoken about, to our dislocated youth, to our returning veterans and those that may have been wounded during service, our disability population. We need to make sure that they are able to receive those services. And I believe we mentioned how, how difficult it is sometimes for for an entity like a state government to have to be able to meet certain metrics for the federal government. And sometimes, in some instances, it could be possible that you're going to pick the easiest opportunities in order to be able to meet those metrics. We've chosen not to do that. We've chosen to challenge ourselves, to be able to look at a, a veteran and say, what are those specific needs in order to be able to get them back to work? They also have possibly a homelessness situation. They also have possibly um, an, an addictive um, type of um, situation that they're dealing with. How can we work with each of those individuals in order to be able to create that opportunity for their future? That's some amazing work. I'm sure probably for the lawmakers back in Annapolis are going to be really excited to hear more about this when they return uh, next January. Well, I hope they do. And, you know, I, having been in Annapolis as, as a former legislator, I understand how difficult it can be in order to um, kind of get a, a full holistic view of what we do in state agencies every day. But we are very open here to be able to educate. That is one of the most important parts of what we can do um, to be able to get the word out about the progress that we have made, the progress that we are committed to continue to make in the state of Maryland when it comes to assisting um, all of the constituencies. And we're fortunate enough here at the Department of Labor to have everyday access to those constituencies, to all of the stakeholders that are involved in this the local municipal um, and county governments, uh, the business community through the chambers and the business associations and groups that are concerned about that, to those nonprofit organizations that have their main priority as being um, assisting the employees to be able to better themselves and to be able to get in, to be an active part of economic growth, their own personal economic viability. And we have daily interactions with all of those stakeholders, which means that we have an opportunity to be able to educate those in public office so that they understand that we want them as our partners as well in order to be able to create the best system in the state of Maryland. And that will just further strengthen the overall workforce plan along with the achieving the goals that are part of the benchmarks. Ab absolutely. We need our public officials in order to be able to help us to further not only legislatively and regulatory regulations, you know, to put um, different types of processes and procedures and, and everything that we do as elected officials, but to be able to tap into their own demographics and their communities and to be able to educate us on some of their needs as well. Madam Secretary, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us today with Maryland Benchmarks Success. We really hope that these series of videos have been educational for you and informative. Thank you again. Take care.